Somewhere in my heart, beneath all my grief and pain, is a smile I still wear at the sound of her dear name. The precious word is mother. She was my world, you see. But now my heart is breaking because she's no longer here with me. God chose her for his angel to watch me from above, to guide me and advise me and know that I'm still loved. The day she had to leave me when her life on earth was through, God had better plans for her, for this I surely knew. So when I think of her kind heart and all those loving years, my memory surrounds me and I can't hold back the tears. She truly was my best friend, someone I could confide in. She always had a tender touch and a wide and gentle grin. I want to thank you, Mother, for teaching me so well. And though the time has come that I must bid you this farewell, I'll remember all you've thought me and make you proud, you'll see. Thank you, my dear mother, for all the love you've shown me. Margaret Olivia Puckering of Skeets Road, Jackman's St. Michael, and formerly of First Avenue, Jackson St. Michael, entered peacefully into rest on Friday, March 8th, 2024, at the age of 74. Margaret Olivia Puckerin, mother of Ivan, Mark, Sean, and Sophia Puckerin, Tracy Holder, Ricardo Puckerin, and the late Betty Puckerin, grandmother of Keisha Dixon. Ivan Romel Edy, Ashley Bedford, Jamar Maloney, Jacory Holder, Jaron and Kashania Holder Joseph, Keandra Drakes, Christina, Kriskoff, Donisha, Shania, Eric, Sharika, and Simone Puckering. Great grandmother of six, sister of Cecilia Puckerin and Gloria Williams, aunt of many, cousin of many, relative of the Burroughs, Lovell, Brewster, Knight, and Puckerin families, a close friend of the Edwards and Parker families, Javis Hunt and many others. A service of thanksgiving to celebrate the life of Margaret Olivia Puckerin takes place on Saturday, April 6, 2024 at the Church of God, Skeets Road, Jackman's St. Michael at 10 o'clock in the morning. The interment will follow at the Westbury Cemetery. Funeral arrangements have been entrusted to the care of Anderson Funeral Home, Lower Barbies Hill, St. Michael. You may join the family for the live streaming of the service and the interment at sharing memories forever dot live forward slash Margaret Puckerin.
The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there shall no torment touch them. They are in peace. Jesus said, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. He, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lives again, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. We, we, we receive the body of our dear sister Margaret Olivia to the honor and to the glory of our God. Amen. Shall you bow your heads with me? Word of prayer. Father of mercies and God of all comfort, look in thy tender love and pity. We beseech thee on thy sorrowing servants, Enable them to find in thee their refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. Grant them faith and hope in him who by death have conquered death and by rising again have opened the gates of everlasting life. Even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As remaining standing, I invite our Reverend Ingrid Holder, to come as she's going to lead us in worship. Blessed good morning to one and all. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the winds of wrath had stored. He had loosed the faithful life of his terrible slip work. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory,
when I in awesome wonder, oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the What? 
time we're going to have a scripture reading and this is going to be done by Donisha Puckerin and this first reading will be taken from the book of first Thessalonians and she'll be reading chapter 4 from verse 13 to 17 good morning But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Say amen. At this time, you may be seated, and I'm going to invite our Michelle Edwards to come and she's going to say a tribute this morning. Good morning, everyone. Margaret would be so happy to see every single one of you here this morning. That's right. You know, she loved visits. She loved people. She would be happy to see everyone here this morning and to be in her house, in in the house of the Lord where she worshipped. We've known Margaret for just about, just under shy of 20 years. From the very start, Margaret became family, adopting and filling many roles as time wore on. It was obvious to us all that for Margaret, family was everything. Family was her world. She dearly loved each and every one of her children, her grandchildren, and great-grands, and spoke often 
highly of every one of you. So we feel like we know you, but you will have to say who everybody is. I know some people, and I don't know all, but I know them through Margaret. The Edwardses became her adopted family. Emma and Holly, sadly, Holly is not with us here today. Her work called her at the last moment and she had to go in. She would especially take to Holly because she was the one at home at the time the most. Margaret became to Holly a moral and spiritual compass, advising her on many things, aspects of life, how to dress, deal with boyfriend issues, and work colleagues. You name it, Margaret knew about it. When Piper was born in 2011, Margaret became her surrogate gran. Her main focus was Piper. When she was with us, Piper got her full attention. We all had to settle for first, second, third, and fourth places after that. Margaret enjoyed many ad an adventure in the neighborhood, walking with Piper, <clears throat> riding the golf cart with Ras, and supervising Piper with Hulk on his cat. Margaret's favorite, um, hang on to this, eh? Mar Piper could do no wrong as Margaret had fiercely defended Holly and Emma. She now was the guardian angel over Piper. My, my departed mum became quite ill towards the end and charged Margaret one day to take care of Piper till she reached secondary school level. Margaret promised her faithfully to do her best to fulfill this request, and she did. If COVID had not interrupted, Margaret would have spent every single weekday with Piper. When possible, when possible and permitted, Margaret would come over to be with Piper when we had to go out and her mum had to work, or she would simply call and ask us to come for her and pick her up to spend time with Piper. Piper adored Margaret. From the time she could talk, she called her R. Grit. So we all adopted that R. Grit. We cannot say enough or thank the Lord adequately for sending Margaret into our lives. We are all the richer for knowing her. It would be remiss of me not to mention a few, of, a few things about Margaret. Margaret wasn't known for her culinary skills, but my husband discovered she could make a mean salt fish and cuckoo. We, he would then invite his friends to come over, and Margaret and my parents and Margaret, to partake of Margaret's salt fish, cuckoo, salt fish and cuckoo. To this day, Philip's friends still in remember how sweet her dish of this delightful delicacy delicacy was. Margaret loved birthdays. She loved to celebrate her own and everybody else's as well. She never missed a birthday call. She would call and wish a happy birthday, even if she couldn't be there. And she never missed Piper's birthdays, not to 10. After that, it was a little dicey, but she would call. Another memory of Margaret. She would listen to the radio, watch the television, the news, and read the papers and hear on the bus, and often knew what was going on long before any of us. If we wanted to know, we would have to ask her. While expounding and giving her account of the happening, she would finish every sentence with, you understand. <laughs> we have adopted that too. So we now say, you understand, to everything. She loved to go to town, to shop. I believe some of you would have gone to town with her to shop. She liked to show and tell everything about her findings, all the greatest things that she just found. And of course, we all wanted what she had. So pretty much next time she had to go back into town, we would give her the money and she would have to go and buy that for us. She would describe town as federation. A saying that we still use to this day to describe crowded places. It was like federation. She was a bit of a fashionista. She loved to dress. 
Dress well, everything matching. Jewelry, handbag, shoes. One of her granddaughters from New York used to send everything for her. And as soon as they arrived, we would say, oh gosh, where you got that? We would love one of those handbags. We love you, Margaret. Margaret. We miss you. But we know you're with Jesus now. Fully whole, healed, with your new spiritual body, singing and dancing in your throne room with all those gone before. We will see you again one day. You understand. I want to leave you with two little, a, a little thing here, a scripture. 2 Corinthians 5.1 For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, this earthly body, fully whole, healed with your new spiritual body, we will have one of those. We will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us, by God himself, and not by human hand. I leave every one of you with this charge. Love God first. Love God first. Put him first. And then love each other with that kind of love that he first loved each one of us. Love conquers all. No matter if we don't like somebody or the way they do something, love them. And love your family. Love each other. We're all different. We look different. But we are one. Amen, Amen to that. Amen. Thank you very much, Michelle Edwards, for giving that short tribute on the late Margaret Puckering and admonishing us the power of love for God and for our fellow brothers and sisters. At this time, I'm going to invite back our Reverend Holder, and she's going to come and lead us in that, that hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way.
it is well with my soul. And as I recount, you know, when Tracy, her daughter, would have given me the account of Margaret's final moment, we truly believe that she can say this day that it is well with her soul. Hallelujah. At this time, you're going to have a second reading, and this is going to be done by Ashley Bedford, and this reading will be taken from Psalm 46. I invite you to stand for the reading of the word. Good morning. Um, giving honor to God and the pastor of this church. Um, I thank you all for being here to celebrate the life of my grandmother. She would truly be elated at the turnout. The reading will be taken from Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake of the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Yes, he is. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathens raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord, is, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh, he maketh wars to feast unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth chariot in the fire. Be still, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And this time I'm going to invite her daughter, Sophia Puckering. She's going to come and she's going to do the eulogy for us this morning. My name to the church. On behalf of our family, we want to extend our gratitude to all of those who offer their condolences and all that joined together with us today in celebrating the life of Margaret Olivia Puckering. We have received countless phone calls, messages, visits, and prayers, and it has been comforting during this difficult time and has been a, remember, a reminder sorry, of the impact Margaret had left on all of us. Margaret Olivia Puckering, born October 22, 1949, until eternal rest on March 8, 2024. She had seven children on her, on her time on earth. Ivan, Mark, Ricardo, Tracy, Sean, Sophia, and the late Betty. Or as she would call me, as everyone would know me as Donna, well, you can say eight children if you include her granddaughter, Donisha, who she will often call her last daughter. Margaret had 15 lovely grandchildren. Keisha, Ivan, otherwise known as Romel, Sherika, Ashley, Jamar, Simone, Eric, Christina, Christoph, otherwise she would call him Bucky, Donisha, Jerome, Shania, Kashana, Jokori, and Keandra, and her bonus granddaughter, Piper. She also had six great-grandchildren, 
the him being the first, who she never called him by his name, but rather Geneve. Shamari, Anaya, Rosario, Sky, and Ari. Mom worked at the care for the elderly home, formerly located in Contreras, St. Michael. While she worked there, she enrolled five of her grandkids at the preschool in that district, where she took and collected them every day, except on Fridays. As she would say that that's her shopping day, so when I got to collect one of the children in the South. She was recognized at Donisha's graduation for continually selecting the preschool for a stepping stone for her grandkids. Mom was a lady that was a hardworking person. She worked her whole life. Even if mom had an off day, she would find something around the house to do, which would include some type of cleaning. She loved taking care of her plants and ornaments. I would tell the grands, don't let dogs mash up not one of her plants. You cannot come by mom and sit in that front house or walk in that house with your shoes. Mom loved to watch TV and watch every episode repeatedly of Criminal Minds, CSI, Chicago PD, and Chicago Fire. She would often sit and watch African movies also. She loved her children, but loved her grands and great grands with all of her heart. As I would tell them, the things she let them go out of with, we never could. She was very, very keen on discipline. In her earlier years, mom was a serious ballroom dancer. She used to keep dances and loved to go to Lonely Hearts Club with her friends. I remember every Sunday watching her get ready, waiting for Sylvia, Jenny, and Miss Simmons to go and meet Ja and the rest in Queens Park. <laughs> Anyone that encountered mom loved her honesty and spirit. If mommy didn't approve of you, you could best believe you would know straight off how she felt about you. Our friends came to have a close connection with her and would call her nothing else but moms. Mom lived a full life on this earth. She always made sure she did her best at whatever she did. As my sister Tracy can testify with me, she taught us how to be great moms, always making our children's needs and not their wants a priority. She lost her daughter Betty, or Michelle as we will call her, on July 9, 2007. Then she met the Parker and Edwards family and started working for them as they becoming one of the family members. While working there, Piper was born, whom mom loved with all her heart. She would always tell us Piper is her white granddaughter. And as much as mom loves her, Piper felt the same about my mother. Mr. Edwards would always say Margaret was the cuckoo and saltfish boss. No one could cook cuckoo like her. Over the years, mom decided to give her life to God. And she got baptized and started her journey going to church right here at the New Testament Church of God. She loved reading her Bible. I remember any time I would tell her about something troubling me or feelings or feeling sick. She would always quote a Bible lesson or a Bible verse. She was a strong believer that God can and will fix any or every situation. Well, mom would say, she would say, God, I place my life in your hands. All my fears, I give on to you. And I would cry and say, mom, you ain't going nowhere. And her response would be, God got me covered and just smiled. Mom lived a full life, and she got to place memories with her children, grandchildren, and some great-grandchildren that they will never forget. It is never easy to say goodbye to someone who has been part of our lives, but we remember all the memories and good times since that we shared. Your children are proud to say, Margaret, you were a wonderful mom, and you had a a wonderful 74 years of existence. We thank you for the chance you have in our lives. Continue to protect and watch over us. As Bucky said, Mom, Grand going to be a guardian angel for her grandchildren and great-grands and the ones to come.
Mom, we love you. And you will forever be in our hearts. Fly high with the angels. This is a little poem. Uh, miss me, but let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a groom filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long. And not with your heads bow down low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this journey we must all take, and each must go alone. It's all part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and you are sick of heart, go to the place we know and burden and bury your sorrows and doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. Mom, you will be truly missed and you will be forever in our hearts. I love you. And we know it's never easy in times like this. And on behalf of the church at Jackman's, we extend our condolences to the entire family of the late Margaret and all the loved ones who she has left behind. At this time, I'll give you a short address, and I invite you to stand with me as I read from the Word of God. And I'll be reading from Genesis chapter 41, from verse 37 to 44. And then I will skip over to Exodus chapter 1, from verse 8 to 14. Genesis chapter 41, from verse 37 to 44. Reading from the New Living Translation. And the word of God declares, Joseph, Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh and his advisors. As they discussed who should be appointed for the job, Pharaoh said, who could do it better than Joseph? For he is a man who is obviously filled with the Spirit of God. Turning to Joseph, Pharaoh said, since God has revealed the meaning of the dream to you, you are the wisest man in the land. I hereby appoint you to direct the project. You will manage my household and organize all my people. Only I will have a rank higher than yours. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh placed his own signet ring on Joseph's fingers as a symbol of his authority. He dressed him in a beautiful clothing and placed a royal gold chain about his neck. Pharaoh also gave Joseph his chariot of his second, his, the chariot of his second in command. And whenever he went, and wherever he went, sorry, the command was shouted, kneel down. So Joseph was put in charge of all Egypt. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am the king, but no one will move a hand or a foot in the entire land of Egypt without your approval. Skipping over to Exodus chapter 1, reading from verse 8 to 14. And it says, Then a new king came to the throne, of Egypt, who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He told his people, these Israelites are becoming a threat to us because there are so many of them. We must find a way to put an end to this. If we don't, and if war breaks out, they will join with our, en with our enemies and fight against us. Then they will escape from the country. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves and put brutal slave drivers over them. 
hoping to wear them down under heavy burdens. They forced them to build the cities of Python and Ramses as supplies as, as supply centers for the king. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more quickly the Israelites multiplied. The Egyptians soon became alarmed and decided to make their, slave, their slavery more bitter still. They were ruthless with the Israelites, forcing them to make bricks and mortar and to work long hours in the field. And I want to zone in on verse 8 of the said chapter, which says, Hallelujah. But it says, Then a king came to the throne of Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. You may be seated. Just to give you a little quick context concerning what was read before you is the account of a young man called Joseph. And Joseph had a rough life. Like many of those who came up in the 70s and 80s would attest. He was one of 12 sons born to his father. And he was viewed as the favorite of them all. And with that view in mind, his brothers became jealous of him. And they plotted at every occasion to see how they could defame his character. But his father loved him. At an opportune time as they presented himself, as they were in the field, and Joseph was sent by their father to, to see about their well-being, they took the opportunity to plot to take his life. But as the plea, at the plea of one of his elder brothers, they decided that they would spare the life of this young man. And therefore, they decided to, to sell him into slavery instead. So Joseph was taken away from his family. He was taken away from a place that he was familiar with. He was, he was taken away from the comforts of his home. But the word of God said that as he went into Egypt in slavery... That he was favored by God. And because of the favor that was upon Joseph, everything around him began to prosper. He was in the house of Potiphar and Potiphar's house prospered. But little did Joseph know that his trouble would only now begin. For in that time, it said that Potiphar's wife set eyes upon this young man. And she desired to have him to lay with her. But Joseph, the man that he was, he decided in his heart that this was not right in the eyes of the Lord. For he valued his commitment and his relationship to God above all things. As a result, he was lied upon. And this deed of faithfulness caused him to be thrown into prison. So being sold into slavery, taken from his home, he's now placed in a prison. But even in the prison, Joseph found favor among men. And it so happened that while he was in prison, two of the king's officials were sent to the very prison in which he found himself in. And they both had a dream. And Joseph, sensing that there was something wrong with them, he inquired, what concerns you two brothers? And each of them told, them, told Joseph 
the dream that he had. And as he inquired of his Lord, he was able to tell each and tell both of them, sorry, the meaning of the dream. That one life would be taken while the other would return to the service of the king. But before they left the prison, he told them to remember me. But now that the buckler was released from prison, reinstated to his duties before the king, he forgot all about Joseph. So time went on. At this time, the king himself had a dream that troubled him sorely. No one could tell him the meaning of the dream. No one could interpret, interpret what the dream meant. But the butler remembered that while he was in prison, there was a man who inquired of the Lord and was able to tell him the meaning of the dream. And therefore, the Pharaoh at that time sent for Joseph from the prison. Joseph was able to interpret the meaning of the dream. He was able to tell the dream that God was showing to him that in the land of Egypt, there will be seven years of plenty. And after that seven years of plenty, would follow seven years of famine. Famine so severe that it will ravage the very nation of Egypt and the surrounding territories. The Pharaoh, recognizing that God was with Joseph and that God had indeed given him the interpretation of the dream, decided that it was in his best interest to appoint him to oversee the land of Egypt to navigate turbulent waters ahead. So because of Joseph's leadership, Egypt was able to store grain for seven years in preparation for the seven years of famine which would follow. And when the famine finally arrived, because of his leadership and because of his wisdom and his advice given to the Pharaoh at the time, Egypt prospered in times of famine. But as the story went on, and as life would have it, Joseph has left the scene. Many years have now passed. And the word of God now says that there arose a king that knew not about Joseph. As our sister lays before us, the memories of all that she has done will be fresh in the forefront of our mind. The legacy that she has paved will live on in the hearts of many. But can I tell you, just as time passed and the king that arose forgot about the exploits of Joseph, there will be some that will forget about the memories of this dear sister. The question was, how could they forget about Joseph? How could they forget about the one who God granted great wisdom? How could they forget about the one whose leadership caused the land of Egypt to prosper? Despite his ability to come through life through the hardship, Despite his ability to ascend 
through the ranks within the kingdom of Israel, there came a time when his memory was no more for those who helped. See, we work our entire life hoping to achieve much. Some hoping to leave a legacy for our children. And by the accounts here this morning, we will see that this was a lady dedicated to her children who would have worked hard and who would have toiled to ensure that they had everything that she could afford. She made many sacrifices. But through it all, what mattered most to her was her family. Joseph was too much. He could have made excuses. He could have given up on life. When time came for him to meet his brothers who would have sold him into slavery, he could have refused to forgive them. But Joseph understood that God had a purpose and a plan for his life. As you sit here this morning, many of you would recount the fond memories that you have of the late Margaret. Many of you would recount the many times that she would have made you smile. Some of you would recount the hard spots that she helped you to get through. But sadly, there are some of you who, as time passed, she would be a distant memory. But to our loved ones, to our children, that she dare cherish. I pray that her life would be an example to you. The life she lived and paving the path for you will not be forgotten. Her, sister, her daughter recounted that even when she found herself in a difficult place, her mom would always find a scripture to encourage her. May her life and her dedication live on. But with Joseph, after much he had done, his memory was still forgotten. But how could they have forgot? How could they have forgotten the one who helped them to prosper in times of hardship? Forgetting the one who advised Pharaoh was to forget the God in whom gave him the wisdom to give the advice. Forgetting the one who interpreted the dream that caused him to be dismayed is to forget the God who knows and sees all things. Forgetting the one who was summoned from prison is to forget the God who grants us favor. You see, the new king who came to the forefront was not just forgetting the things that Joseph did, but he was forgetting all that God did for Egypt. The question is, do we remember all that God has done for us? 
when you look at Margaret's life, some may look at her as one as a tower of strength. But shall I say, it is God who has granted her such strength. In times of hardship, she would have been the one of encouragement. What can I say? That she was an encouragement because God was her inspiration. So forgetting Joseph was not for merely forgetting a mere man, but it was forgetting all that God had done. Joseph made no excuses despite the hardship that he was made to endure. And sometimes, sadly, in this life, we find it so very easy to make excuses. Sometimes in this life, we find it so very easy not to forgive those who have wronged us. Sometimes in this life, we find it so difficult to love those who are perceived as difficult to love. But as the sister came this morning and she gave the tribute to the late Margaret, she reminds us of the power of love. You see, when a loved one passes on, there is a measure of uncertainty. With Joseph on the scene, Egypt and his fellow Israelites had little to worry about. Because he had a leadership quality. He knew exactly what to do. He followed after God and God directed him. But as he left the scene, there came and there ush was ushered in a moment of uncertainty. A time of hardship. As Margaret leaves this earth, as she has departed from this family, there may be a period of uncertainty that may come upon the family. There may be a, a period of hardship. There will be a period of mourning. But rest assured that just as she trusts in God, your hope too should be in God. She has lived her life. She has laid the foundation for her family. And God in his wisdom has decided that her time with you is up. There's no left for you to carry on. When the calendar turns and the time of a birth arise, memories for some would come flooding back. When the calendar turns and it becomes the day of her death, memories will come flooding back. But I want you to be encouraged that God sees and God knows everything. Joseph would have departed the scene. Before the children of Israel threatened a time of hardship. A time so hard that they will often question where is God in all of this? Sometimes we reach that very place. That even I believe as she was nearing the end, the question may have been asked, where are you, God, in all of this? But God sees and God knows. And the children of Israel were meant to go through a period of hardship. 
but they cried out to God. And as they cried out to God, he heard their cries. Can I tell somebody here this morning that as you cry out to God, he hears your cries. So for her loved ones, those closest to her, don't be daunted when others forget her memories. You know what she has done for you. You know what she meant to you. You know what she represented. Her life is a legacy for many. The question is, what legacy will you that remain leave? So though in times we may feel as though we have been forgotten, rest assured that God remembers us. And just as a king arose that forgot all about the exploits of Joseph, he forgot all about what God had done for the land of Egypt. Sadly, we live in a time where many people forget all about what God has done for them. Sadly, we live in a time where people want nothing to do with God. When life is sweet, when we are on the mountaintop, we thank Him for the blessings. But in times of struggles, and hardship, we often ask, God, where are you? So as you gather here this morning to pay your last respect to this great lady, I pray that as she was an encouragement to many, that she would be an encouragement even after she has gone on. But above all, I pray this morning that you would remember God for all that he has done. That you will remember God for helping her through the difficult times. For helping her through times where she did not know how she was going to make it. But rest assured, the same God that she served, he's still on his throne and is able to help you in all things. So as you remember her memory, I pray that you remember also the God in whom she served. May you be blessed this morning. I invite you to stand with me. And I'm going to ask our Reverend Nigel Harris to come. And he's going to pray over the family. For we know that it is indeed a difficult time. And people deal with grief in different ways. But I pray that as a family, as you come together, that you would lift each other up and encourage each other. For the journey ahead may not be easy, but we know who is able to help you navigate that journey. Hallelujah. Let us pray. 
Father, we thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you, Lord, that we have an anchor in you. That when we are weak, we can survive and even overcome because you are strong. Father, I pray today that as we lift before you the family members of our dear sister, that you will strengthen them in the inward part. Lord God, that your strength would be perfected in their weakness. That in times, O oh Lord, of hurt and pain, they would remember that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. That their trust would be in you, Lord, to, to take them through the difficult moments. And you're always there. You will said in your word, you will never leave us nor forsake us. You're not far from us. But you are right there where we are. And all that we need is to call on you. You declare, call on me and I will answer you. Father, I pray that you would touch them and, and you would strengthen them and you would give them the ability to deal with the struggles that they may go through and the pain that they may feel and the loss. But Lord, I pray that they would remember that to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And therefore, our sister, though absent from them, is present in the Lord. We are told in the book of Hebrews about a cloud of witnesses. She has now become a member of that cloud of witnesses who, as it were, stand in the stadium as we continue to run the race in this life. She is like the, 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 the spectator that stands in the stadium now, the cloud of witnesses, and encourage us to keep the faith, keep trusting the Lord. Oh, Lord God, I pray that if they have never leaned on you for strength, that they will learn to lean on you, and that they will, oh God, remember their mother, their grandmother, their family member, and our sister who demonstrated that strength, who demonstrated that love, who demonstrated that confidence in you, Lord. And they, O oh Heavenly Father, will benefit from that and learn to trust in you. I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
my time had come he made a way to bring me home don't cry for me my pain is gone forever don't cry for me my body's been made whole don't cry for me we'll soon be back together don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I saw the light I took his hand we flew on high to the promised land my soul lives on in a better place with all his glory with all his grace don't cry for me my pain is gone forever don't cry for me my body's been made whole don't cry for me we'll soon be back together don't cry for me I'm well within my soul my pain is gone please understand my passing was in God's great plan I'm with you still each day and night just close your eyes I'll hold you tight don't cry for me my pain is gone forever don't cry for me my body's been made whole don't cry for me we'll soon be back together don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I'm in your heart I feel your pain don't give up hope our love remains I'll wait for you at heaven's door cry for me don't shed a tear I've been set free no need to fear God spoke to me my time had come he made a way to bring me home don't cry for me my pain is gone forever don't cry for me my body's been made whole don't cry for me we'll soon be back together don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I saw the light I took his hand we flew on high the promised land my soul lives on in a better place with all his glory with all his grace don't cry for me my pain is gone forever don't cry for me my body's been made whole don't cry for me We'll soon be back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul My pain is gone Please understand My passing was In God's great plan I'm with you still Each day and night just close your eyes I'll hold you tight don't cry for me my pain is gone forever don't cry for me my body's been made whole 
Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I'm in your heart I feel your pain Don't give up hope Our love remains I'll wait for you At heaven's door We'll meet again Don't cry for me Don't shed a tear I've been set free No need to fear God spoke to me My time had come He made a way to bring me home. Don't cry for me, my pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me, my body's been made whole. Don't cry for me, we'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me. I'm well within my soul I saw the light I took his hand We flew on high To the promised land My soul lives on In a better place With all his glory With all his grace Don't cry for me My pain is gone forever Don't cry for me My body's been made whole Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul My pain is gone Please understand My passing was In God's great plan I'm with you still Each day and night Just close your eyes I'll hold you tight Don't cry for me My pain is gone forever Don't cry for me My body's been made whole Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I'm in your heart I feel your pain Don't give up hope Our love remains cry for me don't shed a tear i've been set free no to me my time had come he made a way to bring me home don't cry for me my pain is gone forever Don't cry for me My body's been made whole Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I saw the light I took his hand We flew on high The promised land My soul lives on In a better place With all his glory With all his grace Don't cry for me My pain is gone forever Don't cry for me My body's been made whole Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together
together. Don't cry for me. I'm well within my soul. My pain is gone. Please understand. My passing was in God's great plan. I'm with you still each day and night. Just close your eyes. I'll hold you tight. Don't cry for me. My pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me. My body's been made whole. Don't cry for me. We'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me. I'm well within my soul. I'm in your heart. I feel your pain. Don't give up hope. Our love. At heaven's door, we'll meet again. Don't cry for me. Don't shed a tear. No need to fear. God spoke to me. My time had come. He made a way to bring me home. Don't cry for me. My pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me. My body's been made whole. Don't cry for me. We'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me. I'm well within my soul. I saw the light. I took his hand. We flew on high to the promised land. My soul lives on in a better place with all his glory, with all his grace. Don't cry for me. My pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me. My body's been made whole. Don't cry for me. We'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me. I'm well within my soul. My pain is gone. Please understand, my passing was in God's great plan. I'm with you. Just close your eyes. I'll hold you tight. Don't cry for me. My pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me. My body's been made whole. Don't cry for me. We'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me. I'm well within my soul. I'm in your heart. I feel your pain. Don't give up hope. Our love remains. I'll wait for you at heaven's door. We'll meet again. Don't cry for me. Don't shed a tear. I've been set free. No need to fear. God spoke to me. My time had come. He made a way to bring me home. Don't cry for me. My pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me. My body's been made whole. 
Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I saw the light I took his hand We flew on high To the promised land My soul lives on In a better place With all his glory With all his grace Don't cry for me My pain is gone forever Don't cry for me My body's been made whole Don't cry for me Back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul My pain is gone Please understand My passing was In God's great plan I'm with you still Each day and night Just close your eyes I'll hold you tight Don't cry for me My pain is gone forever Don't cry for me My body's been made whole Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I'm in your heart I feel your pain Don't give up hope Our love remains I'll wait for you At heaven's door We'll meet again Don't cry for me Don't shed a tear I've been set free No need to fear God spoke to me My time had come He made a way To bring me home Don't cry for me My pain is gone forever Don't cry for me My body's been made whole Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I saw the light I took his hand We flew on high To the promised land My soul lives on In a better place With all his glory With all his Don't cry for me My pain is gone forever Don't cry My body's been made whole Don't cry Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul My pain is gone Please understand My passing was In God's great plan I'm with you still Each day and night Just close your eyes I'll hold you tight Don't cry for me My pain is gone forever Don't cry for me My body's been made whole Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together Don't cry for me I'm well within my soul I'm in your heart I feel your pain 
Don't give up hope, our love remains. I'll wait for you at heaven's door. Cry for me, don't shed a tear. I've been set free, no need to fear. God spoke to me, my time had come. He made a way to bring me home. Don't cry for me, my pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me, my body's been made whole. Don't cry for me, we'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me, I'm well within my soul. I saw the light, I took his hand, we flew on high. The promised land My soul lives on In a better place With all His glory With all His grace Don't cry for me My pain is gone forever Don't cry for me My body's been made whole Don't cry for me We'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me. I'm well within my soul. My pain is gone. Please understand. My passing was in God's great plan. I'm with you still each day and night. Just close your eyes, I'll hold you tight. Don't cry for me, my pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me, my body's been made whole. Don't cry for me, we'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me. I'm well within my soul. I'm in your heart. I feel your pain. Don't give up hope. Our love remains. I'll wait for you at heaven's door. cry for me, don't shed a tear, I've been set free, no need to fear, God spoke to me, my time had come, He made a way to bring me home, don't cry for me, my pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me, my body's been made whole. Don't cry for me, we'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me, I'm well within my soul. I saw the light, I took his hand, we flew on high. Promised land, my soul lives on in a better place. With all his glory, with all his grace, don't cry for me. My pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me. My body's been made whole. Don't cry for me. We'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me. I'm well within my soul. My pain.
pain is gone. Please understand, my passing was in God's great plan. I'm with you still, each day and night. Just close your eyes, I'll hold you tight. Don't cry for me, my pain is gone forever. Don't cry for me, my body's been made whole. Don't cry for me, we'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me, I'm well within my soul. I'm in your heart, I feel your pain. Don't give up hope, our love remains. I'll wait for you at heaven's door. We'll meet again. Don't cry for me, don't shed a tear. I've been set free. No need to fear, God spoke to me, my time had come, He made a way to bring me home. Don't cry for me, my pain is gone forever, don't cry for me, my body's been made whole. Don't cry for me, we'll soon be back together. Don't cry for me. Stay with me all my days. I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every
song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We'll live for you, oh, we'll live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We'll live for you, oh, we'll live for you
Jesus declared, I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as it were a shadow, and never continueth in one stay. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may seek for succor, but know thee, O Lord, for our sins are justly days. Yet, O Lord God, most holy, again we will hear, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Grant this, we beseech thee, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. As we invite our pastor to lead in the singing. And the first hymn you're going to have is What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
second ha- hymn you'll have is that hymn entitled Blessed Assurance. Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, from verse 18, he declares, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We will now have that hymn, When We All Get to Heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout. Trusting, serving every 
Psalmist David in Psalm 23, as he looked over his life and recognized the leadership of God in it from the perspective of a shepherd that leadeth his sheep. And he cleared, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we'll now have that hymn when the roll is called up yonder.
things in the past, things yet unseen, wishes and dreams that are yet to come true. And all of my hopes, all of my plans, my heart and my hands. Let us pray. Our God, whose days are without end, and whose mercies cannot be numbered, make us deeply sensible of the shortness and uncertainty of human life. And let thy Holy Spirit lead us through this present world in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. That when we have served thee in our day and generations, we may be gathered to our fathers having a testimony of a good conscience in the communion of the church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a holy hope in favor with thee, our God, and in perfect charity with all mankind through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the benediction taken from Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen.
For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Yeah.